Hello, welcome back to RC Video Reviews. I've been challenged, and I can't let that go unanswered. All right, guys, so you probably know I've been putting up a series of how-tos on OpenTX and the TX16S, and one of our longtime channel subscribers and contributors posted a question, and he said, hey, how would this work? Normally, I don't take requests. I don't, I don't make videos based on questions that I receive in general, but TXK Flyer has been a very regular contributor, and he's actually made some very detailed and thoughtful contributions to the channel. So I thought if he was asking this question, maybe that's a pretty legitimate question and I would try and put together some material to show how to do it. So here's the question. So I've got my iPad and I'm gonna read the question directly off of the comments section. He says, okay, let's see you set up variable rates based on throttle position where full throttle lowers the rate and lowering the throttle increases the rate. This might be used on an elevator of an EDF so that above 60% throttle, it's in low rate. And as you go below 60% throttle, the rate gradually increases to 100% at idle. Okay, so good question. Now, before I go any further, I'm gonna tell you flat out, I'm not gonna backtrack and cover material that I've already covered on setting up global variables to track Expo. So if you haven't watched that video, you need to, because if you don't, you're not gonna be able to follow along unless you're experienced in, in OpenTX, okay? Okay, to set the stage, I created a dummy model to work from called TEST, and this was actually based on my BAE Hawk. For this scenario, there are six different things we need to accomplish, and we're going to start off by setting up a curve. So just like in the global variables video, I'm going to go to the curve section, and I created a curve, but this time we're looking at decreasing the rates as the throttle goes up. So my curve is inversed in this example from 100 down to 30. Okay, so 100 on the high end and 30 on the low end. So, and I called that curve TRA. Remember what I said in the global variables video? You only need a two point curve because if you add any more points than that, then you have to average any other values on your own. If you just keep it at two points and I decide I don't want 100 to be the high, I, I want it to be 90, then I don't have to average any other points. The radio does that for me, okay? So it keeps the application of the curve linear. That's the trick. Okay, so I've created my curve called TRA. All right, the next thing we need to do is create an input that is governed by the curve. So I've gone to the input page and I've made an input already called throttle rate, uh, T, T rat. I call, it I, I call it throttle rate. And on this example, we're not using the left slider like we did in the Expo video. We're using the throttle. We're trying to track the throttle here. And we've, I've applied the curve TRA. That's the curve I just made. And you can see here that as this throttle stick moves, at low rate, at low throttle, we're down at zero, the weight or the curve shows me 100. That's going to be a weight. And as I move the stick up to a point, I hit 30, which would be a rate you'd use, a low rate you'd use under high throttle. Remember, that's what TXK Flyer said he wanted to see. Okay, so I've got a 100 to 30 curve, and that's going to wind up being my rate that I apply under certain conditions. Okay, the next thing we have to do is create, just like in the GV video, we have to create a special function that makes the adjustment to the global variable one. Uh, you can use global variable two, three, whatever you want, but and I use global variable one, and my source for that is T rate, okay? Same, same thing as the other video, it's identical. So remember, you have to long click on this and click on source, and then set it for the input that we just created. In my case, it's T rate. Okay, the next thing, now this is new. We didn't cover this next step in the, in the global variables video, but TXK Flyer said, hey, when it's above 60% throttle, we want it to be in low rate. And as you go below 60% throttle, the rate gradually increases to 100% at idle. 
Okay, so I created a logical switch that says when the throttle is above 10. Now that may be counterintuitive, but bear with me for a second. On a throttle stick, when the throttle is all the way down, that's not zero, that's negative 100. So at 50%, it's zero. So at 60%, it's about 10. Okay, so that's why I use that. And you can see as, now listen for the beep, okay? My beep is set to be at 50% throttle, so listen. Okay, did you hear the beep there? That's 50% throttle. Now, I want you to pay attention to the logical switch one right here. When I go above 50% and hit 60, this is gonna go bold. So there's 50, there's 60, and it just went bold. So the idea here is that logical switch one illuminates when my throttle is above 60%. Now we've created a condition with which we can determine when the given rates are applied. So now we've got our logical switch set up, we've got our curve set up, now we can go back and go to our rates. All right, in the rates, the first thing I want to point out is that I've hard-coded for the first rate an option that when logical switch one is illuminated, I want the weight to be 20, 20%, 20 and that's a very low rate, okay? We're just going to call it 20%. When the throttle is at zero, you can see that the rate right now shows negative 100 to positive 100. So that's a throttle zero. Now as I move my throttle stick above, I'm going to move this out of the way so you can see it. As I move my throttle stick above 60%, you're going to see that the weight of 20 is applied. So here we go. Here's the beep. Now, now first off, you see the weight is changing right here. That's because, that's because I've got that curve applied. We'll get to that in just a minute, so you can ignore that for now. What I want you to do is pay attention to what TXK Flyer asked for. He said when it's above 60% throttle, it's in low rate. So that's what I'm looking for. I want to get to 60%, I want to see a low rate hit. So there's 50, okay, there's 60. Now look what happens. Logical switch one is illuminated, and when that happens, you can see that my rate that I've applied is 20%. So here's negative 20, and here's positive 20. Okay, so that answers the first question. This might be used on the elevator of an EDF so that above 60% throttle, which is where we are, it's in low rate. And I set a very low rate of 20%, but there it is. That's the curve when we're above 60% throttle. Okay? Now, he, the next part of the equation says, as you go below 60% throttle, the rate gradually increases to 100% at idle. Okay, so let's take a look at what I have for that. In that one, we're looking at the global variable. So pay attention when I move the stick below 60, notice, I'm gonna move the cursor so you can see. Notice that the next line on the rate becomes highlighted. See that? We went from the low one at 60. Now, when I go below 60, now our curve is highlighted. All right, so I'm gonna go up here and edit this one and let you look at what that looks like. So this is, again, I'm using the aileron, but it could easily be the elevator, okay? It doesn't matter which surface, it all works the same. So here we go, I've got the source is the aileron, my weight is GV1 in this case, and I set the expo at zero so we could make sure we weren't focused on the expo messing up the curve or changing what we're seeing. It just makes it easier to see what's going on. Okay, so the question was when we're below 60%, the rate gradually increases to 100% at idle. So here's 60%, that is 20. Remember, that's the really low rate. That's 20. Now when I go below 60%, watch what happens to my weights. So, and I, I could have started it higher, but it jumps down to 60. But here we go, as I reduce the throttle, watch what happens to the, the weight. You see how it's increasing, 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 all the way down to zero, and there we go, we're at 100. So as I add throttle up to 50%, the rates gradually decrease. Now I'm going to hit 60% and it's going to jump to low rates. There's the jump to low rates and it stays there while I'm operating above 60%. As I move down below 60%, we'll come out of that low rate and now we're applying a curve that lets us gradually increase the rates to 100% at idle. All right. That's a fairly advanced 
application of using global variables and logical switches to get what you want. And this could be tweaked a little bit. You know, I, one thing I noticed that I would like to do is, is if I were going to use this in practice is I'd probably want to close the gap between that very low rate and the jump when I hit below 60. And that, that's just a matter of tweaking the curve. So I, I know I could do that. No big deal. Okay, before I close out the video, I thought I'd tell you about a couple of upgrades that I made to the TX-16. The first one is that I ordered from A-Main Hobbies a pair of FR Sky Lotus style 3D gimbal stick ends in red. And these, uh, these are the same stick ends that fit on the Tyrannus radios. So they were like 10 bucks. And uh, it's a nice adjustment because um, if I'm gonna let Dave fly my radios, I wanna be able to adjust the sticks a little higher for him and uh, these will allow me to do that. And plus, for a thumb flyer, it's, a, it's definitely a better feel, no question about it. And then the other upgrade that I did was uh, A-Main also sells this part. It's a Fataba heavy-duty gimbal spring, and I'll put the part number in the description or in the video so you can see it. But I'll tell you what, by adding that heavy-duty spring and upgrading my stick ends to these Lotus style, I'll, it just night and day difference. Not that the other arrangement was bad, it was pretty good, but this just, took, this just took it to a whole new level. So I'm very, very happy with that upgrade. And uh, all in all, it took me maybe 30 minutes to put them both, both on the radio. So excellent upgrade option if you wanna maybe find a way to improve the feel of your gimbals on your TX-16S. Okay guys, that is all I've got for you tonight. I hope you appreciate the video. Again, I just want to remind you guys that I, I really don't normally do requests, but TXK Flyer has made some very detailed contributions to the channel. I thought it was the least I could do to answer his question because I figured if he was asking the question, that might be on some of your minds as well. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did find it valuable, your subscription would be much appreciated. And don't forget to hit up my t-shirt store and use my Amazon affiliate links if you're out there shopping for consumable RC gear. And that's all I've got for tonight. Take it easy. All right, guys. Oh, one other quick little thing. You may have noticed, I'll put the uh, part numbers in my description, but you may have noticed I've got some new sticks. I got these from A-Main. These are the first ski sticks. These, uh, Okay, one last thing before I close the video out. You may have noticed some changes to the radio. From, I ordered some of the Fursky, what are they, these are called, I think they're called Lotus Grips. Okay, before I close out the video, I thought, I, all right, before I close out the video, I just wanted to point out a couple of quick upgrades that I made to the radio.